Hey everybody, this is Willie at NewAndLostCrafts.com here today to talk to you about oil lamps. Um, this is our home collection of oil lamps that you see in front of us here. Um, there's a couple different styles that we have right now. They're all, you know, lamp oil based, no kerosene ones yet. Um, I believe you could probably interchange the fuel fairly easily if you needed to and it came down to it. I haven't tried that yet. Um, I like the lamp oil because it uh, it's not nearly as stinky as kerosene. Um, and I'll show you the two varieties that I've been using and the one that I, I kind of favor the most. Um, but let's talk about the difference uh, differences in these lamps. First, these guys here, you can see I have three uh, little miniature guy here, this uh, kind of lime green and then this black one. Um, kind of known as, as hurricane lamps in the design and then you have the the more uh, kind of artsy fartsy glass lamps and the glass ones are what we keep uh, just hanging around the house uh, just for looks and we've definitely used them uh, when we just want some ambiance or uh, they're incredibly useful when the power goes out um, not only are they there ready to go um, but they also put out a little bit of heat, help, help keep your house house warm. They're not going to heat your house, but uh, they definitely supplement a little bit. Um, and they run an awful long time on not very much fuel. Um, the fuel just goes in the base in here, um, and they'll last for several days, just using them a couple hours at night. Like I said, occasionally uh, when we just kind of want some ambiance, um, We'll light these guys up and eat, eat dinner by them or play a board game or something like that. It's just nice, uh, nice little bit of light and I don't know, there's something real special about it. So a few things I wanted to show you about is uh, how to trim the wicks on these. I just got through trimming the wicks on both this guy and this guy. Um, you want to do that occasionally because um, they'll start getting a little bit burned. You won't get as much light out of them. Um, and let me raise this one here so you can see how I did that. Um, hopefully you can see that. So first thing you do is cut off any burned part just straight across. And then you want to take your scissors and you want to use some really nice sharp scissors. And after you cut it straight across, cut just a little angle on both sides. And what that does is it just makes more surface area across the top and gives you more flame. Um, and therefore more light. Um, so you kind of want to approximate the curvature of, of the top of the, the, the lamp here. It doesn't need to be perfect, but do that occasionally. You'll be a lot happier uh, with the type of light that you get off of it. And then the other thing that uh, requires maintenance, and it creeps up on you, you hardly even notice. I left this guy a bit dirty you can see the the chimney to this one is cloudy and this is a even a little bit different type it's a it's not a flat wick it's a little round one and you can see that needs some trimming as well in fact let me just go ahead and do that these are easy because um, all you're going to do is cut straight across there's no tailoring to it let's see if i can get the scissors to do that there we go now that one's good to go. And when these are off, you want the wick down below the level of uh, the, the piece that it's coming out of. Let me show you this here real quick. This, uh, this chimney is really a lot more, a lot dirtier than, than what it looks like. Like I said, it creeps up on you and you don't even realize it. Um, and, but it really affects the amount of light output that you get. So as an example, I can compare what these two look like. I just cleaned this guy. This one would look essentially the same, but you can see this one's definitely a lot clearer. It's just like cleaning your, your dishware. Um, I just get actually a little bit of Windex and some paper towel, um, wet it down and run it in and out just to get it nice and clean. Um, on operating these guys, I think uh, this is one of the most important things I wanted to get across to everybody and these all work the same they all have a little adjustment for the wick um, 
But I think where a lot of people maybe get in trouble is that they extend the wick way too far. Um, and I'll show you what that looks like here. Let me go ahead and light this wick and adjust it down. See the wick really should be down well below the, the surface level of the adjustment uh, plane there. And you can see you get a nice steady flame, well rounded because we shaped that wick real nice. This is going to put out a lot of light for you. I think a lot of people make the mistake of, of having it like this and you can see the second you do that that's when you start getting smoke and your wick burns real bad. So keep that down below the surface um, here and you'll have a lot better results, a lot smoother results. Um, put your chimney on to really know what it's going to do. And you can see you get a nice glow from these guys. And again, a decent amount of heat out of them. If you get three or four of them running in a room, um, it can definitely help warm it up a bit, especially if it's a small room. Um, but these are great. Go get yourself a couple of them. Um, I'll put some links on, on today's post from my blog. So if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, there will be a link to my blog. And uh, Please come visit. Uh, I have lots of videos similar to this. Um, that will help you out in understanding how to do some of these more um, older craft type things. Uh, but I, I will put a couple links on uh, where to find this, this type of unit as well as a hurricane unit. Um, just going through Amazon. You got to turn these guys off. Just slowly drop the wick down and watch to where that flame extinguishes. And basically go down maybe a little bit more but stop right there. Um, there's no worry uh, really about the, the fuel evaporating. Um, it's, it's in an oil form. Um, it'll stay in there for a long time, so they're always ready to go. Okay, I'm going to close off just with the different types of, of lamp oils I've been using. You can see we're almost through this guy, and oh yeah, get yourself a funnel for filling these guys up. It makes life a lot easier. Um, these are both lamplight products, and I'll put some links to these uh, on the blog as well. Um, this is their standard product. Um, it, it, it does fine for us. If you're real sensitive to, to a little bit of smoke occasionally, especially when you're lighting them uh, or extinguishing them, um, you may want to go with the next one I'm going to show you, but this has worked fine for us, and it's, it's really cost effective pretty cheap and a bottle like this will last you a very long time. Um, if you are sensitive, uh, Lamplight makes another product, it's called their Ultra Pure um, Lamp Oil. Picked up this gigantic bottle um, and this will last for a very long time, but this doesn't, I, I can't even tell that it's smoking when you light this. Um, you know, again, the biggest problem is in the way you adjust the lamp when it's lit. Don't raise that wick too high. It doesn't need to be above the surface. It should be below the surface to give you the best light. And just the guideline for it, if you see smoke coming off the top of that uh, that wick or the top of the flame, um, you, your wick is adjusted too high. And all that does is make things smelly, it uh, dirties up your, your chimneys, and makes it kind of a pain. So keep those wicks low. Um, I guess with that, that's about it. Uh, come visit my blog for more information and to find those links and other videos like this. And again, this is Willie at NewInLostCrafts.com. Thanks so much for watching.